Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, attending uh, this virtual uh, open house for the Day Hill corporate area uh, planning study. Um, as uh, hopefully many of you know, um, every 10 years, uh, each community in Connecticut has to update their plan of conservation and development, uh, POC for short. And uh, ours is due uh, in October of 2025. And the Day Hill corporate area has always been a, a chapter of that uh, particular POC date. Um, we have, over the last uh, six or so months, been approached by uh, various uh, uh, development interest in uh, you know, maybe some additional multifamily on a few different parcels and um, rather than uh, uh, look at a sort of piecemeal, uh, the planning, uh, planning and Zoning Commission was hoping that we would complete uh, uh, the study to really uh, make sure that we're doing it, everything in a, a holistic uh, way. Um, the Day Hill corporate uh, area has been a major uh, economic driver for the community and for the region uh, for, for decades now. Uh, it's an important part of our uh, tax base. Um, so we want to be very mindful uh, of our approach and making sure that uh, what uh, plans we have for that area will continue to uh, draw investment. Uh, we'll continue to um, highlight Windsor as a great place to do uh, business. Yes. I highlight when, when I'm marketing and highlighting the the corridor and the corporate area. I always use the phrase "beautiful Day Hill corporate area." I always tee everything up uh, uh, from that. I'm sure folks have been to other communities and been through sort of a mixed-use industrial area and doesn't look anywhere near as attractive as the Day Hill corporate area. So we want to sort of maintain that um, higher degree of um, attractiveness, uh, but also being very mindful of the uh, of the market. We've hired Camoyne Associates and their subconsultant, which uh, Kimberly Baptista is a part of, uh, which is Collier's uh, Engineering and Design, uh, to really look at uh, market forces. They're doing a market analysis, looking at uh, industrial uh, warehousing, office space, uh, multifamily housing, mixed use, retail, What's, what are the opportunities out in the market uh, currently so that we have that baseline to make uh, appropriate uh, decisions? Um, Kamoin and uh, uh, Colliers is expected to complete this uh, study uh, by the end of, Jan uh, the end of January. Uh, we do have a, uh, another public open house scheduled for January 15th. January 15th in the evening, likely to be uh, about seven o'clock, uh, time to be determined. But uh, essentially that is when they will reveal the recommendations from, uh, from the study. Uh, Kamoin and, uh, and Colliers have been doing stakeholder interviews, uh, met with uh, property owners, met with commercial brokers, really trying to get a scan to understand what's happening in the marketplace. Um, but now uh, tonight, uh, both uh, here online and in the town council chambers, we're also looking to hear from the public as to what their vision is for the Day Hill uh, corporate area, which really goes from uh, essentially Bloomfield Avenue to the north side of uh, Day Hill Road and from I-91 to the Bloomfield uh, border. So that is the area that they're currently uh, uh, looking at. So um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Kimberly, and she's going to run through uh, many of the exercises that are happening right uh, downstairs in the town council chambers. And uh, I'm going to leave it to her uh, uh, good graces, and I'll uh, be downstairs. So I hope you have a fruitful conversation, and uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, we have a website, a page on the uh, Town of Windsor website, um, and if you have specific ideas in between after this meeting, you know, send me a, a, an email. We are going to put up a, a survey uh, so that people can uh, complete that at their leisure. Um, so, again, thank you for joining. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to provide us some feedback. So, Kimberly, take it away.
Great. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and just to give everyone else a little bit of a heads up on kind of what I'm going to be walking through in the, the coming minutes. So we I'm going to pull up a map of the study area that Patrick just um, provided an overview of, just so everyone understands the context of the area that we're looking at. And then um, tonight's meeting format is an open house format, if you were live in uh, council chambers. So there's no formal presentation. Patrick did a, a fabulous tee up to give you the context and understanding and the purpose of the study. But the real goal of tonight's meeting is to solicit feedback from community members and stakeholders. So after I pull up the map and orient everyone, I will pull up copies of the boards that are live and in person in council chambers and just walk you through the types of questions that are being asked. Um, once I walk through them, which I'll do fairly quickly, we can go back to the beginning and then have some dialogue about those questions. If you would prefer not to have dialogue as part of this meeting, kind of answer independently, I will also share a link to the survey that Patrick mentioned. Um, that way, that survey, which can be done online, mimics the questions that are being asked at the open house form and that I'll be sharing this evening. So there are a couple different ways in this virtual setting to participate. So you can um, engage in conversation and hopefully we have some robust dialogue here this evening. But if you did prefer to kind of answer the questions via survey, you are certainly welcome to do that as well. So just again, for orientation purposes, I'm going to pull up a copy of the map, if I can get my computer to open the right files. Let's see. Okay, can everyone see the map on their screens? Yeah, now I okay. can. I'm gonna zoom in a little just to kind of go from end to end, but I'm sure many of you are, you know, familiar with the Day Hill area. So a number of sites you can see here just for context, you know, Day Hill Road, obviously, going through the center of the study area. But just again, for context, right, you've got the Target Food Distribution Center set back a bit from Day Hill Road. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Amazon Fulfillment Center. Um, you know, so again, off of Goodwin Drive. So here's Day Hill, just for context, if you're able to follow my cursor. And then heading to kind of the 91 corridor, you know, where you do have a number of the hotels and other ser more service oriented portion of the study area. So again, just wanted to pull this up to start with to provide context and make sure everyone was on the same page with regards to which area of the town we're really focusing on when we kind of start to have some of our conversations. So that was the first file. I'm going to share a second file now that again walks through those questions that are being asked in the council chambers. Okay, so the first board, um, Patrick really covered most of this. So it was a, it's a welcome board, you know, introduction to what the project is, who the key players are as part of this. But I think Patrick did a great job covering this information already. Um, we do, and I can share, we have um, three aerials of the Day Hill corporate area that show it back when it was farmland and how is, it has evolved and grown and developed till today. So, you know, one of the questions being asked as, as you kind of look at that transformation of Day Hill, what stands out at you? Um, what are the important investments that the town has made as the area has grown? you know, to help us understand what are some of the positive impacts that have resulted in the town associated with the development of this area, the Day Hill corporate area. Then we're seeking input as we think about the Day Hill corporate area, as Patrick mentioned, 
you know, there have been proposals for multifamily housing and other opportunities within this area of the town. So one of the questions we're hoping to get feedback on is, as we start thinking about maybe, you know, a different mix of uses in the corridor moving forward, where are these different uses most appropriately located? So where would you like to see green space retained or additional recreation assets? You know, there already are a number of recreation destinations within the corridor. Where do you see housing as being appropriate in context to some of the existing uses that are already there? Retail restaurants, industrial mixed use. So kind of the list goes on. In the council chambers, there's a big map and colored stickers. So people are being asked to put colored stickers on the map. A little more difficult in a virtual setting, but we could certainly talk through any ideas that you have regarding, you know, looking at a map where are the most appropriate locations for these different types of uses. Also questions related to, you know, what type of amenities do you think are important to be integrated into future development in the Day Hill corridor? Is it more signage, more bicycle pedestrian de um, designated facilities, off street walkways, integrating public art, more streetscape amenities like trash cans, benches along sidewalks and trails, um, outdoor spaces and integrating pet friendly amenities are all different options. So we can talk about whether you see any of those as appropriate or if you have other ideas which is what this board is giving folks the opportunity to weigh in on. Um, with regards to building types, so there are a series of questions that our team is hoping to um, get your perspectives on with regards to types of buildings and more specific uses from just kind of that general use perspective. But you know, when we talk about housing, and maybe we identify certain areas that are appropriate for housing. We also want to be thinking about what type of housing. Is it appropriate for single family, multifamily, townhouses, varied densities? So really want to understand from all of you what types of uses might be appropriate. Um, and then there are these questions regarding market opportunities. So again, we can have discussion around these, but these are all questions in the survey as well. So just getting your sense of how you feel these opportunities exist or don't exist well in today's kind of market within the town. And then, um, you know, I think this is a fun question. So thinking ahead to 2030, which really isn't that far away, but imagine it is 2030 and a national media outlet is writing an article about the Day Hill corporate area. What would you want the headline of the article to be? So just giving us a sense of kind of what you see as your aspirational vision for the Day Hill corporate area over the next five years and beyond. So before I go back to those and kind of open up the questions for dialogue, are there any initial questions anyone has has for me. I know the open house format in a virtual setting is a little different, but um, any initial questions? Okay. Would anyone like me to share the survey link at this point or I otherwise I will pull up the boards once again and kind of go through them question by question? Yes, yeah, sharing the link, I think, would be really good. Okay, so let me do that as my next share. Okay, so again, I'll leave this up for, for a moment for folks. So um, the QR code hopefully should work from... Um, you know, if you're interested in access the accessing the survey that way, but otherwise, if you um, write down the link, which is www.surveymonkey.com backslash r backslash day hill. 
And you could even, you know, follow along with the survey as we walk through the boards again. Just leave that up for a minute to make sure everyone has time to, to jot it down. Okay. So Can you read that again? It's not showing all the way across on my screen. I'm losing you after r slash it's day hill. Yep. R backslash day hill is one word. Okay. And the D and the H are capitalized. Oh, I think you went back on mute, Catherine, if you're still talking. Okay. And there's nothing after day hill. Nope. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I will stop sharing and I will reshare the, the boards. Um, and I'm going to go to the land use. So, and maybe just starting off with a, a general conversation, right? Recognizing the, the mix of uses currently in the Day Hill corporate area. Does anyone want to share any thoughts regarding whether they do feel the area is an appropriate place for future housing growth and development, because as Patrick mentioned, that is one proposed use that has been identified on, on a number of sites within the, the area. Linda. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So um, I like to talk about not just that corridor, but what it is adja adjacent to. Okay. okay? So I've owned my property for 30 years. Uh, so it's off of Day Hill Road, you know, on the way to Northwest Park. And as this area has become more developed, it is changing where I live. It is changing my neighborhood. As it gets more built up, more wildlife are displaced. And that is changing my neighborhood. And I want any development to be aware of the impact of not just Day Hill Road, but the whole area. People move to my neighborhood. Uh, it's, it abuts on Northwest Park. People moved to my neighborhood because they wanted to get away from the city. They wanted their kids to have a place to play, a safe place to play. And uh, there have been some changes, you know, because of the influx of um, large wildlife bears, herds of deer, it's changing. You know, the more wildlife you have um, that don't have a place to go, uh, that is destructive to other habitats. If you try to create a wildlife refuge in your yard and the displacement of large animals impacts your ability to provide refuge for small animals and birds. And that has evolved over the th 30 years that I've been here. Thank you. I think that's good information and good context. And yes, I think something the town will absolutely take into consideration as they think about potential build out, right? And not just safety, wildlife, but also traffic and other, you know, related topics that. Yeah. Um, and, and traffic is a part of it, you know, yeah. the more traffic there is, um, the, the less safe it is for the children, you know, for the families, um, for the wildlife. You know, it's, it's, it's growing, you know, it's grown very rapidly. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to bring up the uh, traffic issue. Um, I've seen more accidents on the corner of Prospect Hill and Day Hill 
um, taking a left out of Prospect Hill onto Day Hill, heading towards 91. It's, it, it's horrible between the trucks and um, shift changes from Amazon. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I don't think that the Day Hill area itself, the Great Pond site and all of that there is very well done, but I don't think that Day Hill itself is appropriate for single family unit housing. Okay. The Great Pond development, whatever you want to call that, they did an, a really, really nice job. And assuming that they continue to put a little more green in there and some decent sized trees can grow, it should do very well. I would have, I'm curious about this, the part that's in the process of being built that is before you come to Great Hill, to Great Pond. Um, I'd be curious to know more about what's going in there and how much truck traffic that's going to generate. So by a couple we days really, ago, we had the truck we traffic had more restaurants out, before too. You know, out of Target, Target truck traffic, there was a line of trucks waiting to pull onto Day Hill, you know, in the middle of the afternoon. So with more development, especially with warehouses, it's going to get bad. So yes, traffic certainly a, a strong consideration. And I see Dawn, you have your hand raised. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, lifelong resident here in, in this area off of Milwaukee Drive. So thanks for having this meeting. Um, I'll just kind of reiterate what somebody else mentioned. You know, the traffic is a concern. A lot of the local people now are, are utilizing um, going through Walden Woods just to avoid Day Hill, especially during shift change. Um, I do that myself. Uh, so you got a lot more traffic going through residential neighborhoods um, rather than using National Day Hill based on just the congestion. So just be mindful of that. I don't know what the answer is or if there's alternatives for traffic control, but that's something to think about as we, you know, uh, continue to grow for the area. That's all. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? I know I asked just about housing, but you know, maybe opening it up kind of other types of land uses that folks think are appropriate or inappropriate throughout the corporate area. Um, and I see Susan has her hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, one thing I would like to see uh, changed is there's so many wide expanses of lawn that is maintained. And instead of just having grass, if we could um, instead create more of a pollinator pathway habitat along that entire stretch, um, it could be very pretty and uh, would help with uh, ensuring um, as much nature kind of uh, thrives in that area as possible. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Susan. Are there any types of uses that folks feel would be, you know, completely inappropriate within the, the corporate area? I know someone mentioned Day Hill not appropriate for single family. Anyone else have any thoughts on other uses or things that you would like to see in the um, future? Yes, I do. Um, just two, two comments. First, as we work through this process, this is going to take some time for adoption by um, planning and zoning, town council, additional feedback from the community is I would like to see the town put a temporary moratorium on any additional warehouse um, construction to go on because I believe over time, we are going to come to regret the density of warehouse development that we have already committed to. And um, with a need for more housing, particularly if you had to take, say, from 
Baker Hollow Road on this, I think that's the north side where the Great Pond is, just to, to is block all that off from any warehouse developing in that center. Uh, it was a shame that the Target's lot project was allowed to be built where it is adjacent to Great Pond. The, the original plan, I thought, was for that to be fully residential back in there, and that was changed. Um, and I would put very strong emphasis on conversion of some of the empty office space into multifamily housing development. And Thank you, Eric. Great points. Appreciate it. I think that if if we look at the restaurants and entertainment piece, um, one of the concerns I have is that we seem to have lost restaurants on Day Hill Road. And that's really too bad. We need to encourage that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure people are happy that there are all those additional childcare spaces, but it is also really too bad that we had to lose two restaurants to do it. Um, and on that, at the same time, at the risk of being an old stick in the mud, I do think that one brewery in town is enough. I really would be very reluctant to see us add to that. The one that we have is fine. It's out there. It's got good parking. It's away from res truly residential areas so that it, it's fine. Um, but those kinds of activities, I, I think we do need to really be careful with what we approve and then change later. I think you're right, Eric. It, it's too bad about the target building. Yeah, um, sort of to follow up on that, part of what we did is we've zoned our cell or we've built into the area zone for commercial industrial and it looks like Swiss cheese right now between the developed and the undeveloped plots. Um, we, we lost track of the broader view on what this space could be. And I would look to do some pretty drastic rezoning so that we don't wind up in a position 25 years from now where the only empty land for additional housing is between two warehouses. Um, I believe our planning and zoning commission lost sight of that long-term goal, which I suspect is why you guys were brought in um, to take a look at this. Um, so I'm really glad this is this is happening. Um, Great. But the emphasis on stopping additional warehouse development until we figure out a plan, I think is crucial. Otherwise we're gonna just get ourselves in more trouble. In a business that uh, used to be on Day Hill in two buildings, um, when we lost a lot of restaurants in the area and the area on the weekends, um, restaurants would close. You know, we, we actually moved out of the area, but it just, there was no place, to, no entertainment, no place to eat, no place to grab lunch. And it was mentioned by somebody else that we lost two restaurants um, on the corner of Marshall Phelps and, you know, are we going to lose more? So I'd like to see more entertainment restaurant kind of places to go. Um, Cause being a resident right off of Day Hill, <clears throat> we leave Windsor to go out to eat. You know, we, we have to go farther to eat cause they're really Day Hill kind of, you know, as far as entertainment restaurants dies after 5 PM because they used to cater to the corporate businesses. We used to do the corporate lunches and provide, you know, that revenue for the restaurants. But come the weekends, restaurants would be open and very they have very little traffic because it was all corporate. Hey, Kimberly, could you put up the map again, please? Sure. And maybe while I'm doing that, I see Linda's hand raised. Thank you. Is it okay for me to speak now? <laughs> yep, yep, go ahead. So, um, you know, people have um, different desires in terms of recreation, and I respect people want more restaurants. I'm making a 
pitch for what's called passive recreation as, as we have at Northwest Park. Um, when they uh, designed the, um, the area where the um, uh, apartments are now, there was a plan at one point to have more hiking trails, possibly a connectivity to Northwest Park. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that there are some uh, gyms there and there's soccer, but, you know, I'm making a pitch for, um, you know, passive recreation, places where people can walk. Um, uh, be outside. Kids of all ages can play. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. The walking trails should be fully accessible, though. That's something that sometimes gets forgotten. I think it's really important that we have walking trails and things like that available. But there was a recent article about um, some walking trails and state parks being made fully handicapped accessible with more seating at regular intervals, railings in places, and um, making sure that they, the paved areas were wide enough for um, wheelchair access. And as a disabled person, I can tell you that's something that very often gets forgotten and really does need to be part of the consideration moving forward. Okay. Yep, a great comment, important comment. Thank you. So I'm, I, I'm looking at the map and if you were to think about some rezoning, um, it's really from the Dayhill Dome going west to the town line um, as an area ripe for rezoning. So this general? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you're gonna do additional development, keep it down towards the east side where there's already much more dense commercial development. Okay. Being a resident on the east side, <laughs> I'll have to <laughs> object to that. <laughs> Amazon's enough. <laughs> Okay. The advantage mm -hmm. of keeping it the development on the east side is it's closer to the freeway um, instead of spreading truck traffic out through the whole through the whole corporate zone here. Um, at least keep the origination areas um, as small as possible. Anyone else have any thoughts on, had some great comments, discussion. Anyone else have any thoughts on kind of land use in general or, you know, specific locations where things might be appropriate? Um, yeah, you could, cons um, whatever you're doing here, I would encourage you to also to include the landfill area as part of your planning scope. That's almost completed in terms of its cover and that will add in a few hundred acres. I, or, I'm not sure of the exact measure, but I believe it could be around 100 acres of uh, additional area that butts up against both the park and behind the target warehouse. Um, and I think that should be part of any zoning consideration. Okay. Well, I'd like to point out, um, sorry, um, is that's also be behind a, a major re residential area. It's my, it's one of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And anything built there, originally the plan was as that area um, was um, finished, and then I know there's going to be time required for it to settle. It was dis discussed years ago at Northwest Park um, that that would become part of the passive recreation, extending Northwest Park. Uh, there was a point at which somebody wanted to put a soccer complex behind the residential area, and that brought widespread opposition from the neighborhood. You know, it's it's been a quiet area. 
We don't mind so much the noise from the landfill. We can live with that. But if that was going to be developed into something, that would radically change this neighborhood that people have moved to to get away from the commotion of the city. I don't um, I don't want to listen to that right now. Um, Hold on. My apologies, everyone. I got booted off. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I, I apologize for that. Linda, you were talking when I got booted off, but <laughs> and I, I heard your context about the um, you know proximity to residential, but um, Heather, is there anything you want to add regarding land use? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I agree with many of the comments, especially for the uh, recreation and entertainment and restaurants. Um, and I, I think the repurposing of buildings should, you know, absolutely be looked at and maybe like an artist um, corridor for, you know, supporting struggling artists or, um, you know, the in. I just went to in, in East Hampton, Connecticut, a, an old building, uh, Massachusetts rather, an old building that had all different artists in it, you know, like one of the old warehouse buildings. And it was great. You know, the rent was low. It, there was so much in the building. Uh, so that's one consideration that I haven't heard yet. And so fostering the whole creative artists that we have in the community. And, but definitely, definitely not, not any more warehouses and industrial. They're just sitting empty. It's, um, it's really too bad. And I like the nature park, the more, the better. Um, it's something that, you know, many of the towns are lacking and we definitely have the space. Other um, issue that we ran into being a business in Windsor, um, looking for uh, climate control storage. It is not possible to find it anywhere near Windsor. Um, you know, we were looking to store stuff long-term and it just isn't there. Um, that would be a revenue maker, but it would also be a low traffic, low volume. Okay. Right. Any other thoughts on land uses before I can jump to the the next boards that maybe talk a little bit more about amenities? And I know some of that has come up, but we can dive into that maybe a little bit more as well. Okay. Oh, so now that I got logged off, I can no longer share my screen. So I'm going to have to um, verbally kind of walk you through some of the remaining questions. Unfortunately, I don't have sharing authority. Um, but good thing we walked through all the boards at the beginning. So as you may recall, one of the boards, um, set of boards was talking about design amenities. So and, you know, Heather, you just talked about um, kind of an artist corridor, kind of creative. So the design amenities that we were looking for feedback on, whether you thought they would be appropriate or interesting, public art, wayfinding, you know, more defined bicycle, pedestrian corridors, enhanced amenities for walkers and bikers, um, pet friendly amenities, and outdoor areas. So 
would love to get feedback on, I know, I, you know, someone already mentioned the importance of amenities along the trail, talked a little bit about public art, but would love to get other people's perspectives on types of amenities they think are important and or appropriate in the Day Hill corporate area. Anyone want to share? Do we have any bus route access going up and down there? I can't recall seeing it anywhere. I was going to say, I was just there a couple days ago, and I don't think I recall seeing. I. That's a good question. We can kind of confirm. Because obviously the town doesn't have any control over what the bus company does, but given the volume of people at Great Pond, the volume of people working at Amazon and all of these other places that already exist and anything else that's going to be built out there, it would seem to me that we could address the traffic issues, some of the preservation of the quality of our air, um, if we could get someone to look at putting in a bus route at specific time, especially the changing of the guard at Amazon and other places like that. The passenger was taken to a hospital for a mental health evaluation. No charges have been filed. If you're uh, planning to hit the road for Thanksgiving, if everyone hospital. could just put on mute if you're not talking, just so we don't get any any background noise. That would be great. Um, okay, so great feedback with regards to public transportation options. Um, I, I work up in the Day Hill area off of 1060 Day Hill Road. There is a bus stop right in front of the Hartford Hospital Medical Building. So I know there is a, definitely a bus stop there. And a lot of people do cross the road to get over to where maybe Blimpies is or they work in that area. And it is kind of a dangerous situation, too, to cross that area, especially as the, the last um, person mentioned that, um, you know, changing of the guards at Amazon, the, the traffic is just it's very dangerous. And so but there there definitely is a bus route up there. I don't know how far it goes up um, where the new gas station is opening with all of that up there near um, Great Pond, but I do know we have one definitely right in front of 1060 Day Hill Road. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, my pleasure. Carol, I see your hands up. Hi there, I logged in late, so I've missed a little bit. Um, just a few comments that my father was a builder in town and as his kids were growing up, he always gave us great advice. Don't buy a house where there's open land around you because those are privately owned pro uh, pieces of property that can be developed at any time. So it's very unfortunate. Um, and I've been in that situation where I uh, chose to move out of the situation that I was in. And so I feel for everybody that surrounds Day Hill Road. On the other hand, I think Windsor's um, plan to keep our uh, tax revenue um, businesses in one area is good because the last place I would ever want to li live is Manchester with all the retail that's taken over their entire town or West Hartford. Um, we have everything pretty much all located in one area. Um, that being said, I think when we look at property uh, businesses to go into that area, I think um, they should be geared towards the people that are moving in up there and are supporting that area. Um, they're the ones that are gonna use it more often. Um, so I think that should be a huge priority that the people that live up there should be part of these um, conversations of what they would like. Do they need a little convenience store? Um, do they need, uh, I don't think I'd ever like to see fast food up there, but um, there's some more decent restaurants now that you can get uh, quicker meals for example, Panera Bread um, and restaurants like that. So 
that's just my two cents. Um, we definitely need more uh, retail amenities up there for the people that are living up there because at six o'clock you go up on Day Hill Road um, and it's uh, it's just dead and um, there's so much more potential. And maybe if we bring in car traffic versus truck traffic, that would be more pleasing to the areas surrounding Day Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, Dawn, I see your hand up as well. Oh, just to um, to circle back, somebody made a comment about the bus routes. I know there's obviously a commuter lot at the bottom of Day Hill, but I don't know if it makes sense if they're going to um, utilize more, more bus routes in this area to maybe have another commuter lot somewhere located to, uh, again, maybe help address the traffic issue when people leave the car, catch a bus, whatever. Um, just throwing it out there. Thank you. Yeah. Susan, did I see your hand up earlier or are you all set? Um, I guess I would just, as a wish list item, um, on the transportation side, it'd be nice to have a shuttle that went um, uh, down Day Hill and maybe connected into town, into the center of town or some of the other, you know, maybe down to Wilson. It'd be nice to have a little bit more of a local transportation option than waiting for a city bus. That's a good idea. I think, um, sidewalks going down from the hotels and stuff to the bus lot because there's no place for the people who are walking yeah. to walk. Some more sidewalks I'm hearing? Oh, yes. Can you, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, can I can you? hear you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eavesdropping. Um, no, <laughs> uh, we were wondering uh, down um, Prospect Hill Road. Okay, yeah down Prospect Hill Road, um, if there would be sidewalks going all the way down Prospect Hill Road that connected to Day Hill Road, that would be convenient. Okay. And um, we're coming in a little late. Um, what kinds of stores are being considered or retail spaces are being considered in that area around Great Pond and where they're constructing now? Yeah, so... Um... And thank you for joining us, but we've no recommendations yet. So we are still very much in the information gathering phase. And that's really the purpose of tonight's meeting is to get feedback from community members to understand, you know, what you would ideally like to see or not see. And then as we move forward with the market analysis and understand what kind of the market is telling us the greatest opportunity opportunities are, to balance that information to come up with a plan and a vision for what types of uses um, would be most desirable as we look forward to the future. Okay, I'm sorry we just spoke. I don't know how to put my little yellow hand up. That's okay. No, that's fine. You're fine. Okay, we'll be quiet. No problem. We appreciate the feedback. Um, if I can jump in, um, again, I work on Day Hill Road and a lot of our employees do walk. Um, and if the, the the sidewalks end, I believe, at the, the smallest area, the smaller Amazon heading back towards Perquanic Avenue. And if that sidewalk could be extended down to um, the shops at Day Hill, um, there's no, you know, it just ends. And if it was safer for people to walk down and get lunch at the deli or the Mexican place or maybe even have, you know, it would be nice to see a little convenience store in there. Although we will have that now that the um, that gas station is open. It looks really, they've done a wonderful job with that. And that's something we've needed for years on Day Hill Road as a, as a gas station. So just, um, it just seems like more people are walking. And so they, and I do like the size of it, which is great, but it'd be great if it was on both sides. So it's easy to get to the businesses to um, where they need to go. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts on design amenities or things that they would like to see? Well, um, what I think would be lovely would be um, a place like Evergreen Walk over in Manchester, the small, the smaller boutique kinds of 
um, businesses, particularly for those who have unique kinds of things to sell. Um, and also um, one uh, small, or I know there are a bunch of apartment buildings, but one or two level apartment buildings. Um, and I'd love to live in there. I mean, we live right off of Day Hill Road now. Um, but something like that where you can use golf carts to walk, I mean, to travel around in. So when you just mentioned, which was a good segue, you said one to two level apartment buildings. So one of the other questions we were hoping to get feedback on was really around kind of <clears throat> appropriate scale and density of different types of uses. So when we think about, you know, and identify appropriate locations for future residential in the Day Hill corporate area, are there certain types of residential, either, you know, style or density um, that you think would be more appropriate? And again, it may vary a little bit by location, but just speaking generally, you know, whether that's single family, apartment complexes, townhome style development, um, would be interested in all of your thoughts on that. Well, since no one else is jumping in, um, there are apartments uh, right around Meadowlark and all of those those uh, little apartment buildings that um, have really been lovely here um, in Marshall Phelps around there. I'd forgotten the name. Lived here for almost 35 years, but the newer apartments, their condos and their one and two story and they are they wind around the uh, the area. That kind um, would be would be lovely, particularly, quite frankly, if it were senior citizen kinds of of uh, apartments. Are you talking about Walden Woods? The yes. Walden Woods? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Those are lovely. Those are nice. I wish they had more of that kind of um, housing in the area. I like yeah. that design. There, there are many of us who's you know like. Halloween, we don't have any children around anymore. All of us have lived here for 30 odd, odd years and our kids have grown up. And um, I, we love Windsor and I'd love to stay here, but the house is just getting too big to take care of. And um, so we'd love to have a place near Windsor that we're familiar with that is home. Um, that would be lovely. Thank you. And Eric, I just see your, your comment in the chat. So thank you for that. And certainly anyone should feel free to um, add any comments in the chat as well. We'll be documenting those. <clears throat> any other thoughts on residential development and scale density types? We've talked a bit about another, you know, commercial and types of retail restaurants that you think are appropriate or desirable. Um, we've talked a little bit about kind of office buildings and maybe retrofitting those spaces. How do people feel about additional hotels and lodging? Do you feel like there's enough offered in the area already or might that be another future opportunity? Oh, Linda, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Oh, Linda, you're on mute if you're talking. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So early on, somebody said that they didn't think that single family homes were appropriate. I'm not sure if that would fit in the area that we're talking about, but you know, um, people like single, some people like single family homes. So I wouldn't, you know, uh, exclude it. You know, um, people, you know, I don't know if it will fit in this area that we're talking about, but you know, some people like um, clusters and some people like single family homes. Um, 
So I wouldn't exclude single family homes. And then also about your question about um, hotels, we certainly have plenty of them, you know. Uh, so I don't know if you need any more hotels. You've got a whole string all, all the way up to the airport and you've got clusters of hotels in Windsor already. Okay, great. Okay, and then maybe jumping to industrial type uses. So heard from a number of folks that maybe more warehousing or distribution centers are not necessarily appropriate. Um, any thoughts on data centers, right, that do take up space but have less of a traffic generation impact? Um, or similarly, I think someone previously mentioned like self-storage is another option that has a low traffic impact. How do folks feel about those types of types of uses? Go ahead, Eric. Um, yeah, I would not like to see any more data centers in in the area. Um, it's very valuable land, and that's a usage that doesn't need to be located here. It brings very few jobs with it mm -hmm. um, and has very intense energy use for an area that's already constrained um, for our electrical supply. However, I, I would like to see um, companies that have higher value added that you would get in a warehouse. So it's light manufacturing, um, design firms, um, um, biotech. I think there may be a lot of potential on the biotech side. It's um, very heavy investment, um, high tax dollars that come to with it. Um, and we have to look at companies that will pay enough money so that their employees can afford to live in this area. Um, putting in uh, companies that only pay um, low wages and then forcing those employees to have to commute long distance um, makes terrible environmental sense. Thank you, Eric. Heather, I see your hand raised. Yeah, um, well, I agree with Eric. I kind of throw data centers in with warehousing and and um, it's just another big building that's gonna be up there that, you know, it seems most of us don't wanna go that route. Um, one of the amenities I wanted to mention is, it's a pet peeve of mine, but garbage cans up there. Um, I get so tired of seeing people just throw their garbage anywhere. But if you're going to have a garbage can, you need somebody to empty the garbage cans. <laughs> and of course, poop bags and disposables for those too. Great. Yep. Dog walker amenities. Got it. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts on industrial oriented uses. I have to say one thing about the hotels too. The Marriott it is, uh, it's a very corporate hotel. There is a lot of meetings there. On the weekends, I know when they have the soccer games or softball, it's it's filled with the players and the teams and the parents. Um, so that's a real corporate hotel. You know, maybe a um, ho smaller hotel that would meet the needs of the traveling sports teams. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Which is a great segue because I was next going to just ask about kind of recreation facilities. And obviously there are already some recreation destinations within the area, but do you think there's a need for any additional sports venues, um, a community center? Are more fitness centers needed? And would this be a good location? So, and great. any feedback on any of those? Is there a new pickleball facility going in up there, a large one? 
I believe there is. Yes. Yeah, that that's but and I, I don't know who's planning that, but I heard it's supposed to have a um restaurant and possibly a hotel. You might have to well, we might have to let that all play out and see how the pickleball, the softball, and indoor soccer all kind of jives together. Mm -hmm. What about a community center? Do you see any need for that? That would be great. Okay, so one yes. Anyone else have any thoughts on community center? I'm sorry, I didn't catch what kind of center? Like a community center. And what would that entail? So it was somewhere, community? right, that offers, you know, um, you know, space for local gatherings, has different programming activities. Oftentimes there's, you know, very targeted senior programming. There's very targeted, you know, like teach two-year-old soccer type things, but often community centers also have like fitness classes or a fitness room that's open to the community. But, you know, it's, it's an amenity for, it would be really an amenity for the entire town. Just I know we, we have one in town, the LP Wilson Community Center. I, I don't I don't know if we can support support two. We're going to um, you know extend our resources if if we're able to do that. Okay, I did see might... a note in the chat too about yeah. maybe just fix up the existing one. Yeah, um, I'm not sure there's, the town could support two. I, I'm really not sure. I'd like to comment on that. Uh, the LP Wilson one is great for seniors. Mm -hmm. It's not for an all around family event. I think a community center, it would be um, similar to like a WYMCA um, where there's programs for all ages, um, tying in a lot of healthy um, activities, sports, mm -hmm. um, where anybody in town can join. I know that a tremendous amount of Windsor residents go to the Granby uh, YWCA um, and if we had something like that in the Day Hill Road area, I think it would go to great use. Thank you. Anyone else have any any thoughts they want to share? See the indoor pool. Okay. Okay. Um, so another question that was asked, and you know, you could add it to the chat if you don't want to say it out loud, or if you're willing to share your ideas. But as I mentioned, when walking through the boards earlier, one of the things we wanted to get from everyone was just kind of a, a little bit of a visioning exercise and getting your thoughts on, um, you know, if you were writing an article about the Day Hill corporate area in 2030 what would the title of that article be? So I don't know if we have any creative types on the call that want to share some some ideas. I can't believe I lived this long. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, what was that? I said, I can't believe I lived this long. <laughs> no, um, a, a place for young and old alike. Okay, great. Love it. Anyone else want to share their their headline? How about um, a transformation? Um, something that shifts from this original corridor of um, uh, mm corporations and warehouses to a whole mixed use, environmentally friendly, uh, walkable, bikeable um, area that has lots of trees and shade and everything for people who are out and about and is a mm. is an attractive place to hang out. Right. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, and if you, you know, when Patrick from the town did his intro, and I know a few people joined late, but he, you know, says he always 
introduces this area of the town, not as the Day Hill corporate area, but the the beautiful Day Hill corporate area. So I, yeah, I think that's his vision of the um, the vision statement, which I think aligns well with what you just said. Um, the founders would be proud. So just looking at a few of the ones in the chat. Um, oh, that's a good one. New developments on Day Hill Road meet their goal for 100% renewable energy. In time for Windsor's 400th anniversary, the Day Hill Road corporate area is a model for creative reuse of empty office space. So another great one. Any others? Can I say something? Of course you can. Uh, sorry, I guess it's about time I added my two cents on this. Uh, I'm Bob Ellis, and I live in the Walden Woods area, have been for about 25 years now. Uh, it's off of Marshall Phelps, which is about a half a mile from Day Hill Road, really. Uh, my wife and I are in our late 80s, and so what I offer to you is not something really concerned with long-range planning. I don't, or needs. Um we'll probably sell our house within the next five years moving elsewhere. But I, I'll say I, I do appreciate all the industry that's gone in up here because it obviously increases the tax base and anything that helps me reduce my taxes, I, I support. Um, but I'm also interested in keeping um, the real estate value of my home I mean, I'm going to be selling the place in five years or within five years. And I got to think that industry is, is, while it's appreciated, I think what we need more is something in the way of entertainment mm -hmm. and uh, restaurants. I, I'm sort of torn. I mean, every time I think of uh, something that should go in up there, I keep thinking aesthetically and and practically. You know, I... I don't want to see a McDonald's up here. Uh, but on the other hand, if restaurants are needed. I think uh, retail stores are needed just for convenience. All the people working up here now, I think it would be convenient uh, and appreciated by them if they had some place to shop. Uh, but... Um, Medical facilities. I know there's an emergency care facility up in up by Target, uh, but it would be nice to have something. I'm not aware of anything. Somebody mentioned about hospital, about Hartford Hospital, having a facility on Day Hill Road. I'm not aware of that. I, I missed it somehow. Uh, but I think a, an emergency medical facility would be nice. Uh, Let's see, what else did I write down? Oh, grocery stores. My God, I got to go. Well, again, we're talking about convenience and, and aesthetic uh, values here. It, they, they conflict sometimes. Uh, I don't know which way to go. It's um, yeah, just to having, it takes me five, I, the nearest drugstore is five miles away. Uh, that would be nice to have. Uh, things like, oh, I don't know. I think some movie theaters are, are almost passe now, but. Um, They're coming back. <laughs> yeah. But some sort of entertainment, or my wife and I are beyond the age of. of you know, physical activities anymore that would interest us. So we used to play pickleball, but that's uh, past us now. Um, I can't think of anything else that would be attractive, but real estate values are my primary concern. I think anything you put up there, that's going to um, make things easier for us when it's that time to move. 
That's about all I have to say, I think. All right. Well, we appreciate you weighing in, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, you probably guessed I wasn't Polly. It was some... <laughs> I did guess you weren't Polly. Although, I yeah. Think, you know, should never assume, but yeah, appreciate your feedback. I, I'd like to add on to what Susan said earlier. Sure. Um, you know, we we talk, we we think in terms of in marketing a a, a um, destination store or destination entity, but but it would really be lovely to have it as a destination community, one where one can find a, a grocery, a, a small grocery store. Uh, uh, a thing like uh, CVS, um, senior citizen, but also a walkable, bikeable, small community like Evergreen um, with boutique kinds of unique restaurants, um, but also a place where people would just go to walk when it's nice outside, recognizing how many trees were, were um, and wildlife was disturbed by this. That if would you know an idea of planting as many trees as were uprooted, so that it is that kind of green space there as well for old fashioned kinds of picnics and um, little vendors who would sell um, during the summer little uh, restaurant little small little delicacies and the like. And, just a lovely little place where there are even street musicians. Um, someone had, um, I think Bob and not Polly, spoke about um, entertainment. Um, the small, there used to be a band shell up there. I mean, a smaller one um, where people can, you know, gather and, and sing and listen. But, but enough green space um, that, that it would be purposeful green space. Okay. Thank you. Great, great feedback. Anyone else want to share their, their vision statement? Hey, okay. well, I think we have covered all of the topics on the the open house boards and station. So um, I'm happy to open it up and see if there are any other topics that folks would like to cover or ideas that you want to share. But otherwise, um, and yes, I see a comment. I was going to say otherwise, I will share the survey information again. Unfortunately, I can't pull up the QR code again, but I will read out the link to the survey and then I'll share it in the chat as well. But the link for those of you that maybe weren't on the first time we shared it is www.surveymonkey.com. And then there is a backslash the lowercase letter R, a backslash, and then Day Hill, written as one word with a capital D and a capital H. And I did just put that survey link into the chat if it's easier to just grab it from there. And again, you'll see a lot of the, the content in the survey is similar to what we just walked through and talked through um, over the last hour and 15 minutes, but it'll give everyone the opportunity um, to kind of, you know, think about their responses and then, you know, provide any additional feedback. Um, Heather, your question regarding how will we see notes from the town meeting taking place now? So the Camoyne Associates team um, who's leading this project. So they are at the open house that is in the um, town hall. They will be preparing a meeting summary. So they will synthesize anyone that attended the meeting in person.
they will synthesize the results from the boards um, and summarize any comments from the boards. We will also be doing a summary. This meeting has been recorded. We will also be doing a summary from this virtual meeting. And those meeting summaries will get posted on the town website. So as Patrick mentioned during the introduction, there is a dedicated page to this project um, on the town website. So additional information as we continue to move forward, including the meeting summaries will be posted on that website. The link will also be there in the coming days as well. Any other general thoughts or, or questions or ideas that you wanna share with, with our team? I just wanted to thank you and and the town of Windsor for for doing this. I think it's uh, reflective of, of uh, the concern that our town has for its citizens. And um, I've been lucky enough to live here for about the last sixty years, so it's um, it's a good place to live. Good. Well, I will pass that along to the town. Thank you. Um, timeline for the project. Saw that question come up. So this particular project, the um, planning study looking specifically at just the Day Hill Corridor, the target is to have this study wrapped up by the end of January. So pretty quick turnaround. Um, there will be another public meeting in January as well. And then this project will inform the town's larger effort in 2025 of updating their plan of conservation and development. So that will be completed by the end of 2025 and they will you know, be integrating the results from this study to inform direction of the POCD specific to the Day Hill corporate area. Um, but they do, the reason they accelerated the Day Hill corporate area study is just in recognition as Bob alluded to, in recognition, right, that there are um, some shorter term needs and decisions that need to be made and reflected um, as the community thinks about what they'd like to see and how they'd like to see the Day Hill corporate area developed in the future. So the town is cognizant of that and that is why they um, fast tracked this particular um, process. Any other questions? So for those of you who have been on from the beginning, um, feel free to drop off at any time. I did see that we had a couple um, new folks hop on in just the last couple of minutes. So um, wanna make sure I provide some, some context to any new joiners to the meeting. Um, but just for everyone who's been on since five, I just want to thank you very much for participating and for, you know, being open with your, your dialogue and your feedback. We really appreciate it. And the town is appreciative of this many people logging on and, you know, wanting to participate and share their thoughts. So 